Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Lying Pirates by Nordic Pirate, a two to six player bluffing game in which players are going to play a game of liar's dice, use their ships to move around the board and play action cards, all while trying to get from the start section of the space on this board here to the end section of the space. Can you do that before the other players? Find out in this deceptive bluffing game, which uses not only tiles, but also cards, and of course, lots of dice. The setup for the game Lying Pirates is going to be based on whether or not you're playing with the original base game or the expansion. With the expansion, there's an additional space area which you can have in a larger board, uh, but it's still going to remain the same. Players are going to get a certain number of these tiles here. Uh, they're then going to be placing them along the board to create the board that you see here. All players are going to get a ship and place their ship on the start section of the board. You're going to go from the start section all the way around until the same space has been reached, which is also the end section. Each player Player is going to get a number of crew. These are your dice in the game. You're going to get a bowl and you're going to get a player hub, which is going to be like a coaster here. Every player is also going to get six pirate cards from the deck here and you're going to also draft them. You're going to set up the main game board, which we will tell you where all the action dice and special dice go, as well as the phases of the game. Place each of the die on the spaces that they are stated to go on, whether it be the Pirate King die or the Cursed die or the Mermaid die, as well as, of course, a token for the betting phase, which is where you start the game off. Then go ahead and take all the rest of the crew, place them in this bag here, all the rest of the pirate cards, and place them here in this deck. And if you want, you can play with this deck here, which will change the way the game is played. Then you can go ahead and begin right after you get the last thing that everybody needs, which is their battling die. Start with the player, whoever was last on a pirate ship, and give them the starting player coin. Lying Pirates is played over three phases, the betting phase, the sale phase, and then the action phase. In the betting phase, the first starting player is the one who's going to start with the bet, which is going to be the person with the coin here. Everybody's going to take their cup of dice, pick it up, and then throw it right on their coaster. And remember, there are certain rules where if dice fall out or don't land exactly on your coaster, you're going to lose those dice or crew. So you always want to make sure that when you shuffle them up, you drop them down. It's always going to slam directly on the coaster here. Now, we had a live stream, and I didn't follow those rules specifically because the fact that we were all crunched into a table, and we wanted to make sure that all the dice stayed where they were, we weren't picking up dice, but in the main game, you're going to make sure that your dice go where they need to go. And then everybody's going to have their dice secretly hidden under their cup, and they're going to peek at them. The bluffing phase or the bidding phase is where players are going to start by bidding a certain number of dice based on a certain number. So you'll say, I bet that there is at least one one die among all the die that have been rolled. And then the next player can either do one of three things, either A, raise the bet, B, they can challenge the bet saying that you are correct, there is exactly that many die. Or C, call the pre previous player a liar. Now, if you raise the bet, you're simply going to increase the number of dice and change or keep the same uh, variable. So for instance, if I said one one, you could say two twos, you could say two threes, you could say two fours. If you said two fours, I could say three ones, or I could say three fives, or three sixes, and it'll just keep going up from there. And when betting, the rule is that you're going to not have to exceed, or you cannot exceed the current number of players on the first bet. So if the first bet is, oh, I don't know, a three twos, you cannot have more than three players playing the game, or less than three players playing the game. So for instance, you're always going to want, if you have a, a certain number of players, to have a lower bet total than that number of players. You can't just simply jump up and go, nine sixes! You have to start off lower than the number of current players. The other thing that you can do in the game is you can choose to call the dice exactly. You say, yes, there are exactly three threes, or there are exactly six sixes. In which case, if you get that right, you're going to win everything. You will also get an additional crew for your, uh, your your little cup here. And then the final thing is you can call the player a liar. You can say there are in fact not five fives in the set of dice that you see here face down, uh, and you'll have to all reveal. Everything is going to be revealed if you call the exact or if you call the player a liar. The only way it's not going to be revealed is if you increase the bet. And if you are right, you will succeed. And if you are not wrong, you will survive. Players who are wrong or who lose get nothing. Players who are right win and will receive an extra coin as well as the first player marker. And they will be the ones starting the next bet off. 
Um, and it's going to be switching from uh, back and forth, meaning clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, players who lose don't get to do anything, but the people who survive will also move. And the movement is going to be based on the sail phase, which is the player who wins will roll the sail die. And you're either going to move one or two spaces. So everybody who survived and everybody who won will move up on the board that number of spaces. Then, during the sail phase, each player who's landed on a space is going to do that space. You're going to basically battle for that space by rolling the die, and then the player who wins will perform that specific space, choosing one of the action die to roll most likely, and fulfilling that roll. Otherwise, you might get unique new crew. It really just depends on the different types of spaces that are going to be landed on, and if you have multiple people on different spaces, they may or may not perform a battle based on how many players are there, but you will perform each of the different spaces that have been landed on throughout the game. Then the final thing is the action phase. Now, every single action card can be played if it is gold bordered, I believe, um, whenever it specifically says, or you can just use it out of turn, but any other ones can only be played during the action phase. Uh, I believe like, for instance, silver cards, like duel any player, and if you win, your opponent will sail one step backwards. You can play these cards during this phase. You can only ever play one card though in an entire round. So if you've already previously played a gold card, you cannot continue to play a silver card during the round in which you played a gold card. And then, as after the action phase is over, you will continue by having the first player start the next betting phase. Players are going to then once again shake up, and they're going to place, and then the starting player is going to bet, and it will move around until one player wins, players survive, and one player loses. Then, of course, once again the sailing phase, Players are a player who won will roll the die, people will move if they've survived or did not lose and won, players are going to get their rewards, which are these coins if they've won, and then at the end there's going to be the action phase where players can play cards. Another neat thing about these coins here is they're used for a dual purpose. At the end of the game, if there's a tie, if two or more players reach the end space at the same time, then you'll be able to use two coins to purchase an extra crew die during the final battle, which I'll explain in my review. Uh, you can also use two coins to draw an extra action card throughout the game that you can use during the action phase, or if it's a gold card, you can use during the round in which you gained the card. Very, very useful these coins are. But that's the basic idea of the game, going through the three phases, moving your ships around, uh, rolling that wind die to see where you go, or sail die, and then uh, enacting on the spaces. And the different spaces will have different interactions with players, and then after that you'll do your action phase in which you'll be able to play cards, buy cards, and then finally when the game ends, players reach the end, you'll spend your coins to get any extra crew you might be able to, as long as you hopefully succeeded by getting to the end, and then you'll do that final battle. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but there's a lot to it. We'll get into it in my review. Lying Pirates is a bluffing game of sorts. It's very similar to Liar's Dice. You've probably seen this played out in Pirates of the Caribbean with some slight variations to the rules. Uh, it's one of those classic style games that I've seen played many, many times, but this brings a lot of un unique nuance to it. It adds a board to it, it adds action cards, it adds coins, there's a battling phase. You make sure you feel a little bit extra of a pirate, a little bit more of a pirate than just the simple Liar's Dice. R four sixes or whatever, you know. This actually brings those extra things to life, like moving around the islands and going to different locations and gaining things like, for instance, the pirate die, or of course the pirate king die, or the mermaid die, or avoiding the nasty curse die. All the while trying to battle your opponents. Battling in this game, I want to talk about just a few mechanics, core mechanics in my review here, uh, including what I like about them. Every player is going to start with a battling die based on their color, and this is going to be used in conjunction with everybody else, and they'll roll. Now, if you get a skull, you're out. If you get a sword, you're in. Unless somebody gets a double sword, then they win. Now, if there are multiple double swords, then those so double swords will re-roll. So, for instance, if I have a double sword and a sword, the double sword will win. If I have two swords and nothing else, then you will re-roll these guys. And if there are two skulls and nothing else, you will re-roll. So, basically, there is a hierarchy to the dice. The double, the, the double <laughs> swords are winners. Then the next is the single, and finally, you're going to be out with the skull if anybody rolled anything that isn't a skull. And basically you just keep rolling the hierarchy until somebody succeeds in getting the best roll possible. You could start with two double swords, and then one player rolls a sword and one player rolls a skull, the sword is going to win. And that is how fighting works for pretty much everything, including the final battle. The final battle actually works like this. You'll have a certain number of crew, you'll use your battle die, and you'll roll the dice. If you get skulls, you're going to lose characters. 
And if you do not get a skull, then you're going to win. Uh, however, if somebody else uh, also rolls this, then you're going to re-roll just like in a normal battle. And you're just trying to beat your opponents out by getting the better rolls. And getting those skulls means you're going to be losing crew member. And if you lose all your crew members, you're out of the game. You lost. And the only people who are going to be able to win are the people who get to the very end here, which is why you want to use your coins for either purchasing new cards along the way of the game or saving them all up so you can get more crew, provided you think you're even going to make it to the end. So that's where the double-edged sword comes in. Another thing to talk about are these spaces on the board. Now, in the Pirate Codex, you're going to notice that in the back there are different unique locations, and based on what you're going to do is going to be based on what location you land on. If you're recruiting new crew, you probably have to do something or roll a specific die in order to gain new crew from the Lying Pirate's bag. Or maybe you've made a deal with the dead, and you can multiply the amount of crew um, by five, but there's going to be a penalty of some sort. Maybe the dead don't last very long. The Kraken might eat your crew. Perhaps you can get caught by marauders or a mutiny happens. A spyglass allowing you to see farther into the deck. Or perhaps you're going to duel another player to make them go back or lose specific crew members. And all these spaces are different, and you're not going to be using them all every single game, which is going to change up the variety and the way you play. And for how I like to play the game, is I like to start with some nice spaces, some yellow spaces, and move on to the red ones and make it more nasty as the game progresses until the very end. End. This game is great. I love Liar's Dice. I think they made an extra cool little rule where you can actually say, I believe you are correct. There are exactly that many dice. And if you are right, you're in it to win it. And that is a way in order for people to not be guaranteed to lose. Because if I say that there's five sixes and the next player goes, you know what? There probably is not more than five sixes. If I say six, I'm going to lose. If I call him on a liar, I'm going to lose. So what I am going to do in fact is say you are exactly right. And in which case I can win everything. But if not, I lose tremendously. So it's a big, big gamble if you want to do that. Most people are going to either call a liar or increase the bet and hope the next player increases as well so as not to lose. Losing is the worst. If you win, that's great. There's an extra little benefit to winning. But surviving is also just as good because you're going to be able to move around the board. All that matters is not losing the game. Winning is kind of a bonus extra thing that you can do. Gaining additional unique die, which will be included like the uh, mermaid die or the pirate king die. You'll be rolling them alongside your crew members and they have some very powerful effects. Uh, additionally, too, when you're rolling dice, you're also going to be rolling this uh, the one through six die. Ones are always wild, so you're never going to be saying ones. In fact, you're going to be saying two through six and every one that exists face down on the field uh, that is face that is like hidden is going to count as any single number so if i have two fives and she has a, a one that's going to be three fives and so keeping track of those wilds or remembering them is going to be very important for you to kind of give yourself more leeway and with more players comes more numbers and more guessing this game obviously plays better with more which i love about the expansion which comes with a larger board it comes with extra spaces and it comes with additional players which will increase the amount of gameplay, it will increase the amount of guessing and bluffing and deception, and I love all of that about this game. The quality of the components are excellent. Everything here is nice, thick, wooden, high quality pieces. The coins are in metal and have unique twists to them. All the dice are also etched and have their own unique portions to them that you're going to see that are different. Uh, the phases of the game are very simple, straightforward. You're going to bet, you're going to hopefully win and gain a coin. You move on to the sail and roll and move and fight and get a space that might might help you throughout the game and then you're going to play an action card if you haven't already giving yourself a benefit or making somebody else suffer trying to get to the very end of the game and being able to win by yourself or starting a final battle which is also very exciting and it comes down to who had the most crew members most likely but you can still win even if you don't and even if you spent more time getting, gathering cards to make sure that you could get to the end in order to have a chance to win the game and battling is fun too yes there's random chance in this game you're not going to know every little piece of information you might have to try and guess based on what your opponents do, or you might just simply roll the dice, somebody gets the skull, somebody gets the sword, and they just simply are going to beat you, or you're going to simply lose, and that's fine. It's all a part of the by dire, by, duh, pirate, the pirate chucking mechanics in the game. This is an excellent little game. This is something I'd see easily people keeping around in their collection. It's something I'd rather play over pirate's dice or liar's dice, and I strongly suggest you take a look at Lying Pirates and get that expansion too. This game blew me away, and everybody I know who played it has enjoyed it as well. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Lying Pirates by Nordic Pirates. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below in the description where you pick this game up, as well as a live stream that we finished 
filmed, we played with a maximum number of players, and everyone had a great time. Website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have a uh, live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one, and in fact, we did play this one, which we'll also have a link down below for you to go ahead and check out. That's pretty much all I got for you guys, and as always, I look forward to lying with you next time.